Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen, and uh, I'm a pastor in Brooklyn. Our church is called Graffiti Fellowship, and we're located in far south Brooklyn in the Coney Island community. And uh, I'd like to welcome you to our daily devotion series. And in our daily devotion series, we uh, take a chapter from the Bible and read it together each day. We post these videos five days a week. You can access them at any time, of course. And this is intended just to be a tool to help make it a little easier to include some of God's Word each day. It's not meant to replace your own reading, but to supplement and, and to um, uh, kind of provide some scaffolding or a foundation for that. Okay, We think this is a good place to start. And uh, it kind of shrinks the change, right? For somebody who's struggling to sit down and read for 10 minutes a day, well, pop this in your headphones. Um, again, not meant to replace that. But it is, you know, think of these videos as, as like training wheels. And uh, there's nothing wrong with training wheels, in my opinion. In this series, we're going through John, the Gospel of John. It's the fourth Gospel in the New Testament. And this is the third video in that series, which means we're reading John chapter 3 today. And uh, John chapter 3 is, um, it's not terribly long, 36 verses. And so far, we've, we've had this remarkable prologue that introduces the theology of Jesus, who He is, why He's come, His history, before there was time. And then in John chapter 2, we saw Jesus' first public miracle, turning the water into wine. And if you've missed that video, I encourage you to go check it out, because one of the things that I bring a lot, uh, clarity to is exactly why He did that. And it's a, it's, there's a really significant, really deep meaning. Jesus provides... The, turning the water into wine is about provision and mercy and compassion, not about uh, the party. And uh, I think there's an important explanation there. So if you missed that, go check that out. Now we're going to read John chapter 3. And here we see a very well-known uh, exchange between Jesus and one of the religious leaders uh, named Nicodemus. He's a Pharisee. But he's seeking, and he sees something unique in Jesus. And also here in John chapter 3, we, we see what is, I'm, I don't have any data to support this, but I'm pretty confident is the most quoted uh, verse of Scripture in just all of the world. Uh, and that is John 3.16. And then we see a little more from John the Baptist, who we met in John chapter 1. And um, that'll conclude this chapter. Uh, so John 3 begins, there was a man named Nicodemus. He's a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee, and after dark one evening he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? But Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can re reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. And just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus asked, how are these things possible? And Jesus replied, you're a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we will tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that everything, uh, excuse me, everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. And there's no judgment against anyone who believes in Him, but anyone who does not believe in Him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but the people loved the darkness more than the light. This is because their actions were evil. 
And all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light, so that others can see they are doing what God wants. Verse 22, Then Jesus and His disciples left Jerusalem and went into the Judean countryside. Jesus spent some time there baptizing people. At that time, John the Baptist was baptizing at Annon near Salim because there was plenty of water there and the people kept coming to him for baptism. This is before John was thrown into prison. A a debate broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. So John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, that one you identified as the Messiah, he's also baptizing people and everyone's going to him instead of us. He's stealing our business, they say. John replied, No one can ever receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you I'm not the Messiah. I'm only here to prepare the way for Him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride, and the best man is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. He has come from above and is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth and we speak of earthly things, but He has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. He testifies about what He has seen and heard, but how few believe what He tells them. And anyone who accepts His testimony can affirm God is true, for He is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God gives Him the Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has put everything into His hands. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. That concludes John chapter 3, and uh, you know, really this chapter speaks for itself. Uh, Nicodemus, the Pharisee, the group of people who will challenge and ultimately condemn and crucify Jesus, he sees something special in Jesus, and he understands that Jesus has been sent from God, and so he goes to inquire, and he does so Um, on his own time, you might say, and uh, perhaps secretly, uh, because he has a lot to lose. But there's something in his heart that understands what's going on. And then John, uh, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, the one who has been baptizing people to let them know, hey, prepare your hearts because Messiah is coming. You know, he had his group of disciples, and rightfully so, but his disciples are confused. They're saying, hey, we're lo- this guy's getting more attention than you are now. What do we do? And he says, we don't do anything. Because that's why we're here, to point the way to him. He must increase, and we must decrease. Hope you've been blessed by John chapter 3. Uh, we've been blessed that uh, you would join us, and I uh, hope you'll do it again next time for John chapter 4. God bless.